Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. And today we're gonna talk about it. This is the fifth episode of pretty much how to modify your Infinity Q50 with the VR30. So guys, let's go let's jump into the video. First thing, shout out to my whole Boost Emotion family. Much love. I appreciate you guys' support. And if you're new to the Boost Emotion channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification. Hit all because I have given out so much good useful useful information for the VR30 community. Um for the Q50s and and this video episode of saga is pretty much breaking down every episode so if you miss any other episodes you can watch this one but i really recommend watching some of the previous videos because to do the q50 right you have to do it in these stages all right a quick overcap number one you want to pick the right q50 number two you want to uh, do uh, maintenance before modification Number three, you want to get all the prerequisites first. Exhaust, intakes, some of those things of uh, suspension, tires, wheels. You want to get the car to have all the prerequisites before you start adding additional power. And then number four was we actually went into, um, uh, number four, we actually talked about making some additional power without with adding a minimal amount of miles, which pretty much talked about adding race fuel and or E85 and the prerequisites for that. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about we want now to replace power adders. Everything on the car is basically stock. Stock motors, stock transmission, and stock turbos. We want to now make 600, 700, whatever wheel horsepower. So we're going to have to change out those, those babies. Those two baby snails, we have to change them out. So I'm not going to go detailed on the type of turbos you can go, but I'm going to break it down like this, right? As I've been saying in the last two videos... Think about where you want to land, right? Plan for when you're landing so that when you take off, you know where you're headed, right? So some of these guys in these previous videos, you might, you're going to get off the modifying train at some point. You might get to episode three and be like, I'm fine on my 91, 93, 91 tuned car with bolt-ons and that's it. I don't want to do 85 race fuel. I'm going to leave it at that, right? But for some of the guys, they want additional power. So they went with E85. And they got the things that's required for that. Now you're in episode five now where you want to now make 600, 700 wheel horsepower. You're not going to do that on stock turbos. So there's two different type of turbos or I'll just leave it at this. There's turbos you can choose to go and you can go for. You go for pure, which is 600, or you go with Z1 recently since 2023 is going to give you 700 wheel horsepower. There's going to be more additional turbos that are going to come out in the future. But as of right now, if you want 600, 700 wheel horsepower, those are the turbos you're going to go for, Right. So now understand here, we are now at this point where you are invested into this vehicle. You have spent money on this vehicle and everything is running right. You know what the maintenance is, but now you're adding additional power to the vehicle. So understand things will break. Things will have issues. I'm giving you that warning right now. If you made it to this point and you're like, I spent money and everything's running right. Now you're going to, un I would, I don't, I would still want to say uncharted territory because every car is going to react differently. Now you're adding different size turbos with different CMMs, CFMs, and it will, it will, in return, give you different outcomes. Mostly the same, but different. And I mean different as in the sense of shit is, may break. So, now you chose to add turbos. You just don't slap the turbos on and then leave it the way it is. You had to retune when you did E85. You had to tune when you add the boltons on 91.93. Well, guess what now? You'll slap some turbos on there. For wherever you are now, you have the high-pressure fuel pump. You have E85. You did all of this stuff. You have the bolt-ons. And then you're like, all right, cool. Slap the turbos on and retune. Guess what you just ran into? Guess what you just ran into? Fuel pump issues. You ran into injector issues. What's going on? Why am I having these issues? Based on what the tuners have said, if you got parts just for E85 on stock turbo, that is for stock turbo E85 car. You are now adding additional CFM to this vehicle, so you're going to need more fuel. The stock ejectors will start to run out on the amount of, uh, shoot, the, the word is escaping my head, duty cycle. You're running out of, or think about duty cycle as in the efficiency of the injectors. Let's say the efficiency is like 95%, but as you're making additional power, the efficiency starts dropping from 60 to 40 to 20. You're putting yourself in a category where the spray padding is a lot, the fuel pressure is a lot less, the fuel pump isn't keeping up with the demand, and the fuel, both fuel pumps are not keeping up with the demand, and you, you're, you're, your car is going to run into issues. We don't want that. So 
yeah, you might have went and purchased the cheapest high pressure fuel pump at twelve, thirteen hundred dollars because it was E eighty five car. Now you're making two to three hundred more horsepower. So now you're going to, and or additional or torque. So you're gonna need now to upgrade your high pressure fuel pump. I didn't put this in the next episode because it's still you gotta think about it. Where do you wanna land? Right? Where do you wanna land? So you want the 85, you want to upgrade the turbos. Now you need to go with the biggest bore fuel pump that's out there. You want that fuel pressure to not drop as you make more torque and you make more power through the RPM. So you're going to have to come from spending $1,300, $1,400 to $2,600 to $2,800 on a high-pressure fuel pump. If you would have bought the biggest high-pressure fuel pump when you went E85 on stock turbo, it's a price that you don't have to spend twice. You see, you ever heard that before? Uh, do it right the first time so you don't have to spend do it twice. You get it? So you went with the high pressure fuel pump now, right? Now, low pressure fuel pump, You there are different ones on the market now. I would say there's twin mark, uh, twin, uh, twin pumps on the market now, which are even better for performance. You can pick and choose as you want to suffice, but that may be a better, uh, I would recommend, it may be, a, as the tuners have stated, it is a better option to go with twin pumps or really big, big, single fuel pump so that we can keep fuel pressure level that takes care of that you already got the 85 flex fuel you already got all that other other stuff for the car everything all the boltons are on you slap those turbos on now you start tuning the car on the 85 they can do the same thing they did before on the 85 or race fuel i have to add that in here too race fuel but most people are not going to have upgraded turbos on race fuel because they're not and even if you want to, you're going to need high-pressure fuel pump, and you're going to need a low-pressure fuel pump if you want to do race fuel and upgraded turbos because fuel pressure will uh, drop as the demand goes up because they're larger pumps. Even though the fuel isn't to the same um, volume as E85, you're still going to need to make sure the fuel pressure is good, so you can't really get around that. But let's say you do the E85 or whatever. Um, you tune the car for that. And you got to do injectors because the stock injectors after a certain amount of wheel horsepower and demand will just not suffice. So you're going to have to spend money on injectors at different companies to go with. You choose to go with those injectors. You swap those in. Now you get the car tuned on E85. You're making 600 to 700 wheel horsepower. And now you are making additional power on your Q50. Now you are coming to the upper ceiling of where the Q50 really is. Yes. At this point, you can sit there and say, I've done everything. I have Z1 turbos. I have pure turbos on all these other modifications right now. And I can pretty much call the day right here and just leave it at this. Yes, you can. That's it. You have finally officially modified your Infinity Q50 Q60. Right? There's so much things I didn't speak about in the middle of this. There's still uh, suspension and drivetrain upgrades you can do for your car. There's certain... Um, engine mounts and stiffness and sway bars and there's so much other things that you can add to your car for the drivability the performance the consistency of um, the heat exchangers there's plenty of other things that you can add but at the minimal this is how you get to 700 wheel horsepower without anything else to really invest into the car period that's it yes you made it you finally officially tuned your infinity q50 or and or q60 or even nissan z right so in the next video, I'm going to pretty much talk about, I would say, some of the things that could happen after reaching this level. It could also happen at the car is stock, too. But I would just give a brief uh, synopsis of things that you can add additionally for drivability performance. And that's it. But otherwise than that, guys, I appreciate it. Listen, I'm a, this one was a very short video. It wasn't anything really invested. But I want to talk about some of the disastrous things that could happen next. And I think that's the most important. All right. So I'll start it, guys. I really appreciate you. Hope you guys hit the like button, subscribe button with the bell notification, and hit all. All right. So let's get to the last video. Um, let's leave it as like when disaster hits. Let's go. Let's jump into it.